Hello everybody and welcome back to our second game of um, our day one broadcast for the week three of group stage for Victory Road World Cup of Pokemon VGC sponsored by Elgato, GG Tour and Metafi. Uh, my name is Evan and joining me, uh, I believe for the first time is, no it's for the second time, is David Partington. Um, how are you doing David? I'm good, thanks, Evan. Pleasure to be here, right with you again. I'm still working on getting the uh, all the Pokemon merchandise like that you are at the moment, but <laughs> we're micro for now. But watch the space, so we'll see. But what a game one that we, I was watching there with you guys! Like that was really crazy. Hopefully, we can have a very interesting one coming up right now. Yeah, what a way to start the stream. Um, let's give everyone a little bit of a recap of um the players that we featured in. The previous match, so that was Arbin um, Tumaneng from Philippines versus Naoto Naoto Kishida, also known as Channa from Japan. So we have a very long stream again uh, ahead of us today with four more matches to go. And for me, coming from Asia, I'm really happy to see a lot of Asian countries being featured. But then again, also a bit sad that the Asian countries are going up against each other as we have another matchup here um, of. Hong Kong versus Thailand of um, Yuan Nahin versus Akarapon. We sure do. And uh, looking at this group four overall, it's, it's there in a group with India and Costa Rica. And this group is no means by decided yet. Which, so it would be quite interesting to see how they're going. But as we can see, we've got a, a few more after that. Uh, we've got India versus Costa Rica and even more for later for this final week of the group stages. So um, Thailand versus Hong Kong specifically should be quite interesting because Thailand needs to draw to be able to secure themselves into the top two, whereas Hong Kong needs to win. So as you can see there, Hong Kong is 2-1 up. So they, even though they have to kind of get the win, whereas Thailand have to get the tie, they are still a little bit further up. So they just kind of need those that three more wins to go. And this match is going to be very important, much as well than the others as well. So as we can see their little teams down there, Evan. Yeah, so I feel like every match is so important for Hong Kong here. But Hong Kong has been bringing really interesting teams. We also saw um, quite interesting teams coming out from the more recent Hong Kong Nationals. Um, it was a best of three tournaments, so it does seem like these players are bringing teams that they are comfortable with. But there are some niche picks here from the Hong Kong side with uh, it, an Eternatus, um, with the Sogalio Kyogre that Hong Kong um, is quite popular for now. And then with uh, Dust Clops as the trick room setter for Sam at the bottom most slot. Whereas for Thailand, they also bring pretty interesting teams as well. Um, with the Eternatus mirror. Wait, actually, yeah, there are two mirrors. So I'm not sure like how the players prep for each other or, or kind of did their homework. Uh, kind of cheeky and really interesting there. So I'm not sure uh, what was going on there, but it's so interesting to see. Yeah, both sides looking like they're trying to be a bit cheeky here and really bring something out the bag for this like final week of the group stages so they can try and make it into that top cut. So, um, and then they end up both facing something quite unusual that they probably haven't faced too much of on the ladder. Yeah, but as you guys have seen in the, during the break, the teams that we're going to feature for this stream match is, um, will be quite interesting as we go into the player profiles from both sides. Um, speaking about being cheeky, uh, Ngahin is actually using a really cheeky photo coming out from the um, Hong Kong players. Uh, not sure why they wanted to, to, to provide these photos, but it's quite fun and kind of like, um, you know, lightens the mood in this very serious competition. So we do see a lot of good accolades and good results here because Ngahin has been playing from um, 2013. So having two um, top eight results in nationals and then two top eight results in the regionals and being the 2017 Hong Kong Open champion and also the 2018 Hong Kong regionals champion uh, does have a lot of experience behind their belt. Yeah, that is some really strong performances there. Whereas on Akara Pond's side, they've got the Thailand Nationals ninth, so just bubbling out of that top hey. eight, and therefore like world's invites as well. So they must be feeling like pretty gutted after that in 2022, very recently. So uh, World Cup is a great opportunity to try and, well, kick around and 
maybe show off what could have been um, and arguably on one of like the biggest stages outside of World Cup anyway. Um, so I believe Akarapon is one and two so far in the 2022, um, whereas, so, sorry, O and one, apologies, mm. and Nahin is one and two. So both these players have kind of a negative record. So they're both looking to be able to make that a tie here. And as we can see from their teams, we've got a Kyogre versus Groudon once again with the Zashians. Nothing too crazy, at least looking straight at it, but we might see a little bit more um, as the games progress on. True. I think today, like the players are kind of testing us as casters to be able to um, like discern a lot of the items coming out from these teams because these teams kind of are um, popular archetypes, but the players can actually customize them quite a lot to their play style or even prepare things that surprise their opponents, especially in these kind of team league formats. So being able to collect information, especially in the best of three, um, is really good practice for a uh, practice for these players and just being able to represent your country. We saw that these two players did well in their respective regions, you know, in their respective nationals um, and got pretty good results. So being able to go up against another player from across the world would be very interesting to see. So here, um, what I see in front of me would be like having two grass types on the Kyogre Zashin team could be useful against the um, Rinya Sun team, so to say. So it's interesting to see how uh, Akarapon can maneuver out of that, uh, maneuver out of that, or kind of use Dynamax to the to its full potential. Yeah, Nahin's thunderous there. I'm I'm maybe guessing it's like the prankster thunderous on this team because you've got the Kartana, which you might want to Dynamax quite a bit, Kyogre, which you want to Dynamax quite a bit. So you don't really want maybe three op Dynamax options. It's usually quite a lot. So I'm maybe expecting the prankster, but. That is like all speculation right now, could definitely be a defiant. And Akarapon has also used their same Rinya Sun team last week. So whether Nahen is going to for it this time around remains to be seen. But anyway, here come the leads Kyogre and Incineroar for Nahen. And we've got Venusaur and indeed Female on the other side. We might need to check the um, game footage because these Pokemon are not what we saw in the, the teams there. So. Let's see how it goes. Um, and also the, the, the game is in Spanish, so let's yeah, so let's give our um, production team a little bit of time there. I I was a bit scared to um, go into a game and, 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 and try and read Spanish again because uh, I was told that this match is going to be in Chinese and I'm very comfortable with that um, to be able to help you out, David, uh, and maybe yeah. <laughs> translate some of the moves um, that we see coming. So yeah, so that was the Argentina game. So forget about that, like the forget about all those that you see. No spoilers ahead. Um, yeah, let's talk a little bit more for um with this matchup, right? As we're really just gonna see a lot of Zashan Kyogre going into worlds. But the question is, do you think like Zashan Groudon could be useful? I think Zashan Groudon definitely is useful. As we saw, there was a little bit of a a, a flare of a, like a different sort of team that. Um, even though it's using mm. that Hulk as Pengi kind of said this earlier, that um, people are exploring it a little bit more. But the great thing about like Rinya Sun as Akarapon is using here, you can still switch it up quite a bit, even though you're using the same six Pokemon. Like, are you using Trick Iron Boy, Trick Lightning Tail? You just Thunder Wave, are you Babiri Bay, are you Focus Sash? There's so much mm. you can do with like, that's just the Grimsel I'm talking about. So there's so much more you can do. However, we're going straight into this game now. We have the footage. So it's Grimsel Charizard, the old tried and true tested lead for Ring Your Sun that we often see, versus Thunderous mm -hmm. and the Zashian on Nahin's end. So um, this will be the time for them to really reveal what sort of Thunderous set they're running here. And the Dynamax button looks like it's being clicked here. So I'm, and like, I'm also seeing a Steel move, Evan. So I'm wondering if that's the Iron Tail, which could be something, especially if it's Life Orb, could be even getting a one hit KO on this opposing Grimstar here. Yeah, it really comes down to what the Grimstar goes for with its prankster moves um, to either do um, something defensive or maybe to even trick something onto the Thunderous to make it go slow and allow the Charizard to um, attack right after. So we do see this um, Thunderous coming, like Dynamaxing straight away and we also see the Charizard Dynamaxing so both Max Airstream users are coming up to play and um, really put on a lot of pressure against the opponent. Very brave of a Charizard to Dynamax in front of 
the Max Lightning from the Thunderers. So let's see what surprises Akarapon has. Yeah, I'm imagining some form of speed control at the moment. Possibly a Thunder Wave or a likely trip there, I'd say. So um, mm. we'll have to see. It's an Iron time. Ball. <laughs> iron Ball, okay. So thank you so much, Evan. We're so glad to have you here. <laughs> so. Behemoth Blade is going to come out first from behind then into the Grim Snarl. That's probably going to go down unless it was a Focus Sash Thunderous, which is not. So Grim Snarl is going to go down. No more screens, no more damage control for now. But as it's the Iron Ball, yeah, Charizard outspeeds straight away, getting a KO on the Zashian as well. Arguably a pretty good trade for Akarapon at the moment, but we are yet to see Nahim's Thunderous go for a huge move here. So whether it's that Max lightning or that max airstream is another thing but there's the life orb revealed on charizard so uh, no charty berry which wouldn't come into play but no lumberry either but there is the max lightning doing a huge chunk of damage there setting up the electric terrain so no further sleeps can be hitting things including nahin's thunderous as it now kind of technically on the ground thanks to that iron ball taking a little bit of wildfire chip and we're now going to see um both players bring in their third pokemon yeah I'm really always very impressed by Charizard's bulk, right? Just being able to take that Max um, Lightning and possibly go for another Max move here. So um, Akarapon maybe knows his damage counts well and really just goes straight for the Dynamax, recognizing that the Zashtran is an important um, piece of the puzzle to take out on Ngahin's end. So both the Zashtran from Akarapon's end switches in and the Incineroar from Nahin is able to intimidate the Zashin down and maybe provide fake out pressure. I'm not sure if the fake out into the Charizard could take it out, so um, that's down to what uh, Nahin decides to do. But Zashin does provide good um, pressure here, and having the Iron Ball onto the Thunderous um, could allow both Pokemon to, to go for damage right on this turn. Yeah, it's, it's going to be really close as to where that fake out um, KOs on our, I mean, it doesn't look like that Charles has got much bulk on it at the moment, so it's mm. based on how much it took that Max Lightning. So um, I imagine a fake out probably is just enough as well, and if not, definitely after that Life Orb chip. Um, however, Thunderous is going to be going last this turn, whatever the, the case may be. And uh, with a Zash in there, it's going to do a lot of damage. But we do actually see the ground on switching. So a Carapon putting all the eggs into one basket here, really hoping Charizard gets this attack off and probably, hopefully, likely for him, that KO onto Thunderous. But there's the fake out and it is enough. Uh, yeah, Charizard goes down. So isn't able to um, make full use of the sun um, provided by the Groudon. Um, Nahin actually calls that, you know, like maybe the um, Groudon would want to switch in and doesn't blindly click the Max Lightning. Goes for the interesting move of Max Steel Spike. I didn't really notice um, before the Thunderous Dynamax what that move was, but interesting to be able to give both Thunderous and Incineroar a, a defense boost. I was thinking if the Groudon were an Incineroar, it could like reduce the um, fake out damage, but no, it was the the Groudon coming in, right, instead of the Incineroar from Akarapon's side, and um, all of a sudden, he's just down to two Pokemon um, with the Zashan on the field. Zashan does come in fresh, so would be able to pressure a lot of damage onto the Thunderous, especially when the Thunderous didn't go for an Airstream boost, went for the Steel Spike instead. Yeah, so kind of what could be quite neat here is if, yeah, if we get like a parting shot coming out from the Incineroar, which still lies on like one <laughs> HP. Oh, no, it's the Focus Sash. Okay, so. Probably not a lot of bulk on this incident here, and therefore, because it's probably quite fast, it's actually outspeeding the ground on now. And so, yeah, you get the parting shot, you get your Kyogre in, and you're going to give it a speed boost to the airstream, which is exactly what you need. So, if you're fast enough, which it might look like it is thanks to that low HP stat, it probably is fast enough to maybe outspeed his Ashen at plus one speed, and then just clean up from here. I'm assuming it doesn't take too much damage from a possibly incoming Precipice Blades, however. Wow, this is just so insightful. Um, here comes the rock. Oh, it's the Precipice Blades. But wow, just not being able to take that um, Thunderous out. And a really cool Max Ash stream to be able to bring the Kyogre up to plus one. Yeah, I was saying earlier that like all these item and team building choices do come into play as that um, Incineroar is able to just get that parting shot off and survive on that focus sash. Really interesting things here and like as casters, I, I just find it a very cool challenge to be able to remember all these moves and from both teams in particular, right? To um, like get as much information as possible for ourselves even. 
Yeah, now on Nahin's end, uh, they've got to hope that this Origin Pulse is, is enough to maybe take out the Zashian, which with a Wave and Sense might be for the, maybe the really less bulky ones, but it's usually the Water Spout that gets guaranteed, but not the Origin Pulse. So maybe scouting out of Protect here, Karapong goes for the uh, Protect of his own, where an attack is going into it from the Zashian most likely, and but the Wild Charge now comes out from this Thunderous. Looking like that plus one... Um, Airstream boost is, made, is, is now enough, actually, to outspeed the opposing ground on, which is interesting. Uh, Prestus Blade, though, it does come out, and it is hitting the Thunderous because of that Iron Ball, and it does go down. However, um, I believe we get to have an Incineroar coming in on an already protecting... Um, uh, potentially two protecting Pokémon, but... Um, so no Protects called from there. However, I don't know how many more Wild Turns we've got left, because that Kyogre is looking pretty low right now. Yeah, I haven't been counting and I didn't see the message that the wildfire um, dissipated. So there could be just a, a very, very easy protect play coming out from Zashan. So just the in terms of the timing, yeah, Nahin is just not able to um, like do enough damage, which goes to the, like which makes me wonder whether that protect on the Kyogre, you know, was it like does it make sense and whether Kyogre could have just gone for damage. Uh, we still don't know the speed interactions between the Zashan and the plus one speed Kyogre and we do see, we did see Nahin just go for the Sacred Sword into the Kyogre slot so we still don't know the speed interactions here but I think it does make sense for Akarapon to just go for Protect here and does the Groudon protect? The Groudon doesn't protect, Incinero goes for Fake Out into the Zashan slot and here comes the Origin Pulse. Does it hit the Groudon? Yes, it does. So, uh, Origin Pulse is going to hit the ground, and I'm sure that's going to go down regardless if you're Assault Vest or not, which we're yet to kind of see or get revealed in possibly future games. But yeah, I think if there's one more turn of Wildfire here, it's not looking good for Nahin, um, as that will just take it down. But as far as I'm seeing, there is none Ooh. left. Okay, so <laughs> it's just whether this plus one speed Kyogre is enough to outspeed this Sashian, because there's a whole different ranges of speed stats that Kyogres often go for. This is obviously this wave incense or slash mystic water, so um, it might be quite fast. Could be max speed, maybe quite. But often you go to like that middle speed just to make sure you outspeed ground ones, but maybe not enough. That would plus one you outspeed, mm -hmm. especially the max speed Zashin. So there's a lot revealed in this turn, but it is the origin pulse going first, and it hits, which should be enough to take out this Zashin with no more special defense boosts, giving the game to Nahin of Hong Kong. Yeah, what an interesting back and forth there, and. Um... The Kyogre is able to pull through and being well trained to be able to um, outspeed the Zashan on Akarapon's side. From Akarapon, he did not bring the Gashodon, which could be um, interesting, right? And uh, opting to go straight for the Charizard strategy, the Charizard Dynamax, unfortunately, can only um, would only take um, sorry, only got off one max move, right? And then got KO'd by the Fake Out after. So maybe have to go back to the drawing board the information that you have and try and um, strategize in a different way. Like that Iron Ball into the Thunderous was okay, but Thunderous was still able to get three full max moves off and just help the team a lot, give the max airstream boost to the Kyogre and put a lot of impact um, in this game. Yeah, and I think Karapon was probably rightly a little bit fearful of like the two grass types on our hands end, like the Kartana mm. and the Whimsicott. So um, maybe thinking, oh, sure you're going to bring one of those because I'm going to bring my Gastron. And then we didn't see that at all. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, which kind of really put Nahin in like the driver's seat there, just not being able to, needing to deal with uh, that Gastron on the field. Um, but even so, putting the eggs of the Dynamax into the Thunderous Basket kind of made sense as well, because even if you didn't bring the Gastrodon, then you can still bring a Kyogre, do a lot of spread attacks, and Kyogre's not doing a whole lot of damage to you anyway. Plus, if you set up the Max Lightning with your Thunderous early on in the game, it's not even, it can't even yawn you either, because um, there's no obvious way to set to really change the terrain for um, a Karapon either. So um, going to this game too, it's going to be whether uh, like we see a bit of a switch up, Maybe we see the Gastron, or maybe we see the extra grass type on our hands to counter for that. But either way, um, Akarapon is going with the same lead, whereas there is a slight switch up on mm -hmm. the uh, Nahin's end with the Zashian and the Insula. Yeah, so it was once a Thunderous, but here the Zashian is able to just um, come in to provide uh, a lot of pressure and maybe similar to game one to kind of do the job to remove the 
Grimmsnarl from the field entirely. So notably, like Grimmsnarl isn't able to um, go for any tricks onto the two Pokemon of Zacian and Incineroar because Incineroar is Dark type and Zacian. Oh, apologies, and Zacian holds on to his item there. So um, let's see what other moves uh, Arcarapon has prepared on the Grimmsnarl, and will it be safe for the Charizard to just Dynamax like that with? the Incineroar having fake out pressure and Sachin still being able to do significant damage into the Charizard. Absolutely. So uh, there's a couple of things you could do here because obviously as we've seen time and time again, Sachin could do a heck of a lot of damage to Charizard. But yeah, Groudon is the switch in here, which I kind of agree with. It's fairly safe. It covers any sort of fake out play and you definitely can take a Behemoth Blade too. It means that Charizard can at least get an attack off because if your Sachin isn't attacking, then it's either protecting and then it's not doing any damage back. And even if you're wildfiring into it, that means you still get up the wildfire chip at the end of every turn, which is still probably a net benefit for you. So um, I still kind of like this play. Um, mm -hmm. So I think if uh, Nahin's going to come on top here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be like a parting shot into the Charizard because you can take any hit thanks to your Focus Sash. Yeah, so here comes the pick out into the Groudon. So good switch from Akarapon and the Beamer Blade just going straight into what was once the Grimms now. Let's see if it's able to take the KO onto this Groudon. Yeah, not enough. And if the Charizard is able to go for... Oh, he went for Air Stream, so into the Incineroar, bringing it down to the Focus Sash, but importantly giving the special... Sorry, the Speed Boost onto the Groudon. And come now, wow, it comes down to the Groudon on the opposing end. Um, but let's see if it's able to outspeed the Zacian on this end this time. So um, Charizard once again reveals the Life Orb and yeah, Ngahin, even with that, like, I think that Focus Sash um, like, might be not beneficial in this situation because the because Nahin made the read to go for the Fake Out instead of a Parting Shot. Indeed, however, Akarapra has put himself in a very strong position now because you Threaten just wildfire, precipice blades right now. Have a uh, Nahin, as we can see, is probably contemplating the Kyogre switch in here to be re really be able to reduce this Charizard's damage because you're not going to be able to get the sun up that quickly all of a sudden. So um, it's whether like a wildfire is going to be doing enough damage into Sasha with the rain up, which is very much likely isn't. However, you can just go for the dub up with the precipice blades too, which would do a heck of a lot of damage and to your switching in Kyogre, which you ideally want to Dynamax too. So as we can see, Nahin doesn't want to oh. risk it. Does take end up taking the airstream, not super comfortably there. That does so much damage, and that doesn't, that's not even a critical hit. It's just really showing the power of Life Orb um, Charizard there. So, and with that second speed boost, Groudon should be able to outspeed now. And it does look like it's hitting with that Presence Blade into the dash, and likely not a KO based on that bulk. But uh, that's a lot of damage coming out in this turn two as Zashin now goes for that Behemoth Blade. Let's see who's going to target here. I'm imagining the Charizard, that's where you want to get a lot of damage in right now. Yeah, so, uh, but it's not going to be a KO just yet. Yeah, so Charizard's bulk and typing pulls through here once again. Charizard is just so commanding on the field and Akarapon smartly um, chooses to go for the um, G-Max Wildfire in the end game. So kind of locking the Zacian in over here and that damage into the Thunderous is just um, irreplaceable. So very interesting to uh, and very smart to go for the Airstream to just um, sort of confirm the Groudon to be able to move next and at the same time hide the Groudon speed stat and just put on so much pressure and at the same time still be able to go for the um, Wildfire Residual damage towards the late game and Nahin is just running out of um, Dynamax options as we do see him choose to Dynamax here. Yeah, we do. So um, I'm imagining it's the Thunderous at the moment. Yeah. So, um, but it's still a really tricky pos position for our Carapon because, like, he's got all the speed control right now. He just has to pick slots to really KO. So, um, Nahin seems to be really saving that Kyogre for the end game and still potentially fearing for that Gastrodon is not indicating that for its Dynamax target. So, Wildfire does come out on the final turn of Charizard's Dynamax, which is really efficient as you now get the wildfire chip onto everything for the next four turns um and imagining uh, some sort of attack from Groudon, likely probably the rock move or some sort of i think that was a there. fire yeah that was a fire move um pro fire possibly move, okay. fire punch um because he con confidently went into a dynamax target instead of something like the heat crash um but 
Acarapon did exactly the correct thing to do, which is not to target the wildfire into a Dynamax Mon, since it has the potential to max guard, so Nahin might be making a bit of a hard read there. So going for the wildfire into the Zashan is absolutely the correct thing to do, since you are already faster, and you kind of guarantee the wildfire to be set on the opponent's field. And yeah, with the timer ticking down onto Thunderous's health, um, let's see if Thunderous is still able to make an impact on the game. I think Nahin is still um, preserving the Kyogre for the end game to be able to dish off powerful water spout. So let's see um, how the turns play out as we do see Kyogre and Zashan come out on the field. I'm interested to see uh, that uh, Incineroar wasn't the choice for Nahin there mm. because, like, Kyogre, uh, the person grounded on a Carperon Sand is like plus two speed right now and, like, just outspeeds everything and threatens the KO on Thunderous. Whereas now, into this turn, it still threatens the KO and you don't have the Incineroar to fake it out either. So, um, I'd, so you probably want to, like, switch that up if, if it were me personally, but, um, like, UK are out of the uh, World Cup now, so <laughs> who's to say? So, anyway, mm. like, Kyogre is in this time, so very much likely. Be, um, able to get KOs in both these Pokemon with the in the right situation. However, um, Zashin coming in is just able to like hit into anything at the moment. Kyogre can hit into anything at the moment, getting just a huge amount of damage. Um, you do need to kind of double up to be able to KO this Kyogre. So at least one Pokemon is going to come out of this or from Nahin's end. Um, and it's just going to be whether maybe Airstreams can get into the Incineroar enough, but as we can see, our Carabon still has switching power, so Groudon comes back out and in, in comes the Grimstar this time. Oh, it might be um, like speed interactions. Maybe a Carabon did the math and thought that a plus two Groudon might not be able to outspeed a plus one speed Thunderous, and Nahin just has a lot of control here. It just is free to go for the max Airstream and even um, does significant damage into the um, Grims now with this life orb as the um, Kyogre is able to go off, go for the origin pulse and actually manages to hit the Zashan, uh, sorry, the Grims now to take that KO. But interesting protect coming out from Akarapon with that Zashan, still buying a turn to be able to um Oh my gosh, that's oh. one HP ouch. Yeah, I was I was saying like to be able to just um wait a turn and hopefully get that Thunderous to go down, but no, Thunderous actually survives at 1 HP. Yeah, so uh. unfortunately, like, in game 1, Akarapon like, maybe doesn't kind of think the fake out's going to KO his Charizard, and then, mm. like, game 2, he thinks that the Wild is going to take up the Thunderous, and it doesn't, so, like, uh, the damage intuition is really not in his favour at the moment. And now he's brought in his Groudon, having lost the speed boost too, so, um, Zashin now, um, unless it's got a really powerful play rough into Kyogre, um, is possibly not going to get a KO um, on it, which means Kyogre's probably going to be able to hit back with something. However, Sun is obviously up at the moment, but you do have, a, again, the ability to switch out your Kyogre if you so wanted to, but um, Zashin's really putting on a lot of pressure, but after, like, Nahin's Airstream, he's able to just Airstream again, make the Kyogre even faster, and suddenly this game is really turned on its head, I think, Evan. Yeah, looking at Nahin's team composition, it's just so interesting to see this um, live orb Thunderous in play. So, wow, he chooses to go for a max steel spike instead of the uh, max lightning that does more damage. Um, this is Thunderous's last breath that is going to go down to the live orb. So, it's a really interesting idea to give the Kyogre a plus one defense boost to be able to take hits better from the two physical Pokemon in front of it. As Kyogre is able to go for Go first because of the airstream boost. Go for the water spout that's really powerful and is able to take the ground on down. Um, just isn't able to take out Zashan with that amount of bulk. Wow, this is Solar Blade! <laughs> right, so, Solar Blade Zashian, which is again, so there's lots of different ways you can run Ring Your Sun, and one oh. of them is putting Solar Blade on your Zashian to destroy Kyogre. So, despite the plus one defense boost from the Steel Spike, which I thought was like a, such a great play, uh, is again one up by Carapon's completely like out there, like Solar Blade, which is such a great play. And Incineroar comes in, and unfortunately, even if you're max speed, you're probably not outspeeding Zashian. So Intimidate does come out, but it's going to be a simple protect and then just go for the attack. Um, so like, wow. Um, <laughs> this game just flipped again, Evan. 
to a game tree. That's wow, what a crazy set of games today. That's so amazing. I, I just feel so lucky to be able to read the, the words immediately. I saw the solar blade, I was like, wow, that's <laughs> really cool. And it actually worked out. Like the max steel spike was so smart coming out from Nahin, but it just didn't pay out uh pay off as the Zashan is just way too powerful. So here it's able to um, do the finishing blow into Incineroar and bring the game to a game tree with so much back and forth. I think both players really need to dig deep to be able to um, try and win this set out for their country as this is a very important set. It is. And like, instantly, I think like both players had like plays they could have made that could have won the game maybe a little bit earlier mm -hmm. if they kind of like maybe saw saw that opening or saw it coming. Um, so like it, yeah, it was really interesting to see just how it like flipped around. And interestingly, at the end there, we actually saw uh, the Sacred Sword also revealed from the Zashin, which didn't need to get revealed. Like you could have just gone for a second Solar Blade and we hadn't seen it before. So now we have the full set of uh, Akarapon Zashin, which is like the Behemoth Blade, the, so the Solar Blade, the Sacred Sword and the Protect. Mm -hmm. So um, no play rough, which is not a huge deal going into um, uh, Nahin's team, but like it yeah. can be pretty big into like a non dynamax Kyogre, for instance, um, in the rain. So um, you're kind of relying on having the weather control at that point. So I can see why um, like you want to bring Kyogre to this matchup if you are a Carapon. True. And also, I think Nahin might be like sort of um, hitting himself because like that max, if the Thunderous went for the max lightning, it would have done good damage into the Zashan and um, with that water spout combination might even be able to take that Zashan out and now both players have to go into um, this game tree. Akarapon is really trusting the Charizard mode, going for offense and just putting out so much pressure onto Ngahin's side of the field and just trusting this um, Zashan and sorry this Grims now and Charizard lead, leads it once again. Whereas Ngahin goes for yet another um, adjustment here, instead of bringing Incineroar, goes for the Zashan and the Thunderous lead to also help put um, good pressure right, in terms of Dynamax, but you always have to remember that the Grims now has that Iron Ball. Yeah, so Nahin's going for the same lead as they went in for the game one, which kind of obviously worked out for them. So, um, might see the Dynamax again, and as you said before, Evan, like, even though the Iron Ball was put onto Thunderous, it's still putting a lot of work getting up those Max Lightnings, doing a huge chunk of damage to Thunderous, and was able to stick around to use up all three of its turns. So um, there's not a lot stopping it from just going for that max lighting just like last time, um, assuming our Carapon does the same thing here. So, um, but Nahin is actually, we're seeing switching oh. it up at the moment, going for the Protect instead. Grimsoul looks like it's gone, gone for a similar thing, actually going for the trick, but let's see where this uh, potential wildfire ends up getting targeted from a Carapon because it went into the Zashin last time. And if, it's, if it does this time, that's going to be pretty big. But first of all, it's the blade into the Grimsoul, picking up a KO. Yeah, Nahin is playing one um, sort of turn in advance and kind of um, hard reading that Akarapon is naturally going to go for the trick into the Thunderous slot. So, preserves the Thunderous Dynamax for one turn and Akarapon does not go for the Airstream. So, the Thunderous is still able to outspeed the Charizard on the next turn. So, Charizard um, went for the same play back in game one to go for Wildfire to remove the Zashan once and for all. So this is a trait of both the Zashan and the Grim Snarl. So um, things are going to play out differently, but I think the idea of going for the Protect on turn one to um, keep Thunderous's life orb intact could be a good idea. And let's see how this plays out and whether um, Nahin made the right choice to be able to close out this game. Yeah, and because we know this is a really fast Incineroar here, you can uh, if a cover on a brought into the Kyogre, say there, you're able to go for like an airstream, then pass and charge the Charizard before it attacks, and then get in your Kyogre with, um, like, in the rain, taking whatever attack from the Charizard pretty free here. But Carapon does not kind of fall for it and, like, go for that weather control just yet, going for the Groudon, keeping it in the back here. But uh, thanks to Nahin having probably the slower um, of the partners here in terms of that Incineroar, you are still able to kind of switch in your Kyogre. Um, in anticipation of any Groudon potential switching on Akarapon's end as well. So you're a little bit safer and more free to kind of go for attacks here and be able to take hits from Charizard. So I like Nahin's position at the moment, especially as you've got the later Dynamax at this point too. Um, and still no stun up on the field and still no switches either. So both players kind of like biding their time, not willing to risk that big switch yet, um, as, which kind of makes a lot of sense. Both these Dynamax targets are on a lot of health, but first of all, 
one big thunderous is coming to the field and as we saw before like a fake out plus max lightning is actually a ko on charizard so let's see if that even that might happen here whoa akarapong goes for the max guard instead so here comes the fake out of the incineroar into the zashan and um zashan moves next and then the thunderous actually went for max lightning and chooses not to go for max air stream so akarapon with that smart switch of the zashan is still able to put on offensive pressure because Zashan will be able to move first so this seems to be uh, an, sort of an even turn coming out but very interesting off that max guard and um, really strategic and thinking a few turns ahead and let's see how Ngahin is able to adjust from here there could even be a, a switch in of the Groudon to be able to do so much damage into um, both of Ngahin's Pokemon in the previous turn I thought something could be cool is that Maybe the Incineroar could fake out the Charizard and then Thunderous goes for Max Lightning since you know like the damage cut from the um, previous turn but uh, it just didn't play out and Akarapa is actually switching Charizard on the third turn of Dynamax out. Yeah, into the potential Max Lightning as I think Nahim went for it last turn so Groudon's coming in this time and Nahim's oh. the same thing it's going to go straight into that Groudon and do absolutely nothing which is going to be very cool and that would be two turns of thunderous like this dynamax just kind of wasted but, but first of all the behemoth blade comes out first a neutral attack thanks to the the, intim the incineroar's intimidate so it's not going to be a ko right now nor past the life orb but yeah max Lightning into the ground so what a switch in via carapon as we do see the flare blitz in the sun however because of this ground switching and that's a ko on the zashian uh well such interesting plays coming out from both players being able to read each other pretty well but um yeah i think nahin kind of covers that instead of going for the parting shot actually goes straight for damage into the zashan and actually covers it right is able to bring zashan down and now charizard has to switch in and thunderous is still able to move first with that last turn of dynamax just really interesting uh, altogether and how we actually got to this point yeah now I Karapon is down to his last two Pokemon. So that means with a Kyogre in the back for Nahin, that's the Weather War one at this point. So hmm. um, if Nahin's able to position his Kyogre like correctly and kind of safely, and potentially with that airstream boost that I can see him hovering over there, uh, like he may be able to just clinch out this game pretty convincingly. However, with a Karapon's like tools at his disposal with like just a life bulb Charizard with probably a hurricane and like a Groudon that's that's kind of come in like unintimidated at the moment. That's still a, quite a risky switch to make if you're not him. So, mm. uh, yeah, as we see, no switch here. It is just that airstream so far, and it does a huge chunk of damage. So, what Kyogre switch? And you, we do not need right that right now. Yeah, so just bringing the Incineroar to plus one speed. This is a Focus Sash Incineroar, so it should be able to outspeed the Charizard. I'm uh, sorry, the Groudon right now. Here comes the Flare Beats in the sun into the Groudon. Let's see if it's strong enough. Um, Groudon seems to be trained. Um, pretty bulky, but this just makes so much sense for Nahin not to just risk the um, the Kyogre on the free siege and take unnecessary damage and that Precipice Blitz actually misses into the Incineroar just buying yet another turn for the Incineroar to move. Yeah, so not risking the Kyogre switch in yet, nor going for the parting shot because yet again, you risk that Precipice Blitz like critical hit which like or something yeah. that's just really crucial to be able to take out this Kyogre. Now, what is probably an Assault Vest uh, Groudon means it's probably not going to be able to protect and therefore kind of allow the Thunderous to go down this turn to Wildfire. So, and as we do see, it is the fourth bit of Karapon. And so, Nahin of Hong Kong is able to take this set two and one. Yeah, wow, I just enjoy this match so much because both players have been like kind of playing calmly, even though like the Dynamax has been um, like sort of at the first turn and being very explosive, right? Like both teams seem to be quite hyper-offensive, but the players seem to be managing um, the strategies really well and are still able to get to a game three and still able to like um, call the opponents well to be able to win out the game. So very impressive showing from Nahin, just with those early plays of a protect and then still being able to kind of cover the Groudon switch in and take out that Zashan. That's really cool. Yeah, and, and I think we, as we saw as the games kind of progressed, like it was very kind of like methodical and like 
very kind of like play by play, right? This is how I play this matchup in games like one and two. And then that final game was like read after read. We had like max guarding Charizards. We had like this, the, the switch out the Charizards into the ground on. We had like the, the protecting thunderous like turn one as well from the, like the, the trick. It was like all very like kind of hard reads kind of going on. So I think both players kind of realized like, all right, you're a good player. I need to play like a little bit more risky now. And that just kept going with both players. So like, it was just such a fun set to watch. And for two like fairly pretty standard teams, but the little spice came out too, is like the Solar Blade and the Sash Insane. Like, ah, oh, that was a great set. And now Hong Kong are like only two wins away now from being able to take the set and therefore get themselves into the top two of their group four and therefore actually make them into the, uh, well, the top, uh, the top cup. Yeah, like really have to fight so hard to get into the top um, two spots of this group. And we're also going to see the remaining two countries of India and Costa Rica fight it out in the next match. So notably, Costa Rica is like at um, two losses, so they won't be able to go through. So this is an, a very intense fight between Th Thailand, Hong Kong and India. And one thing I also wanted to note is the Kyogre end game of Ngahin just pulled through because he always had the Kyogre save in the back and this reminded me of game one um, of today's stream so currently Kyogre is two for two and just a little teaser ahead that we might see a few more Kyogre so um, this is just like like I said in the beginning of the stream a very interesting teaser for Worlds and we also get to see um, the players being featured and, and just really see how well they played first two matches have been so um, amazing to watch and amazing to cast. So um, India and Costa Rica are coming up next, so don't go away.